everybody, it's Erica. Today I'm hanging out with Kenai and Makui. And for our wolf fact today, we're gonna to talk about wolf paws. So Makui is actually showing you her paws right now. Uh, wolf paws do have a lot of extra fur in them and not only can that help with heat, but that also helps them with traction since a lot of times they are hunting in snow and slick areas. Now, the cool thing about wolf paws is that the front paw is actually larger than the back paw so that when they walk, their back paw will land in the print left by their front paw. And this helps them be more efficient when they are running through that deep snow. That way they only have to punch through the snow uh, with their front feet and not all four feet. Helps them conserve energy. So for today's topic, I wanted to talk about the concern uh, with the wolf reintroduction in Colorado and the effect that it will have on the elk and deer populations. It has been brought up numerous times that wolves will devastate Colorado's elk and deer populations, but we can look at what happened with Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming's populations over the last 25 years after their wolf reintroduction. All three states have reported more abundant elk and deer herds and more abundant hunter harvests today with wolves than they did 25 years ago without wolves. And with regards to the concern of Colorado's moose population, uh, it is unlikely that the wolves will have a effect on these animals. In the Northern Rockies, uh, moose make up less than 1% of a wolf's diet. Hunting moose can be a lethal activity and so wolves generally avoid these animals. Now, Rocky Mountain Wolf Action Fund estimates that wolf restoration will reduce Colorado's elk and deer population by about three to 4%. Currently, there is an estimated 750,000 elk and deer in the state of Colorado. Now, based upon research in Yellowstone, uh, 18 to 22 deer or elk are taken per wolf per year. So let's say initially that 15 wolves are introduced into Colorado and those 15 wolves each take 22 elk or deer in a year. That means every year wolves would take about 330 elk and deer. Now this would leave over 749,000 elk and deer untouched by wolves. This is plenty of animals for hunters to be able to have a successful hunt as hunters take about 80,000 elk and deer in a year. Now, decades of research has shown that wolves generally target the young, old, and sick prey, which makes up only a small percentage of their prey population. Most of the time, wolves are unsuccessful hunting because most of their prey population is dominated by the individuals that they cannot catch. An adult wolf has about a 1% chance of killing an adult elk by itself. So the baseline is that a wolf's own biology enforces strict limits on its ability to kill ungulates. And it is these limits that prevent wolves from behaving as runaway killing machines. And that brings me to the topic of sport killing. Uh, it has been noted that wolves will sometimes kill multiple animals and then not consume them immediately. This has been referred to as sport or reflex killing. Now, wolves are not going to risk injury to themselves just to reduce their own prey population. Biologists have noted what they call surplus killing. Uh, when a wolf will kill more animal than it can eat at one time with the intent to return again and again to that carcass and consume it over the subsequent weeks. This has been seen in areas like elk feeding grounds, those like the ones in Wyoming that draw thousands of elk. And it's not until humans intervene that wolves will then sometimes abandon that dead prey. But that is more of a human problem than it is a wolf problem. 
I also want to mention one of the great benefits that wolves will have on Colorado's elk and deer population, and that is decreasing the spread of chronic wasting disease. So Colorado Parks and Wildlife estimates that 57% of its deer herds, 37% of its elk herds, and 22% of its moose herds are infected with the always fatal chronic wasting disease. Now, it has been shown numerous times and through much research that wolves do target those sick animals because they are weaker and easier to take down. So wolves would help reduce the spread of this disease by eliminating the animals that are infected with the disease. It has also been shown that having wolves on the landscape causes elk herds to break up into smaller groups which could also help mitigate against the spread of this disease. Now, in fact, today in places that have large concentration of wolves, we actually see little to no chronic wasting disease. It is estimated that wolves will have an either, even greater effect at reducing the infected animals than mountain lions do. And currently mountain lions kill infected animals at a rate of three times the infection rate of a herd. So having wolves on the landscape would actually help make our current populations of ungulates more healthy because they're gonna help prevent that disease from continuing to spread. But the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about today is that voting on initiative 107 is not a vote of either or. We're not voting either we have wolves or we have elk and deer. We can have both. Uh, for decades, wolves and ungulates lived in the same ecosystems with a very healthy balance in their populations. It wasn't until humans intervened that those populations started to waver. Having the appropriate predator here in Colorado, again, is going to help those elk and deer populations in the long run. Uh, having the appropriate balance of predator and prey is vital to a healthy ecosystem. And that is what we're voting on here, to bring our ecosystem back to its most healthy place. Uh, thank you all for watching and tuning in. Thank you for your comments and questions. And I think for today, we're gonna end with a little wolf howl.